All right, you guys, lesson 10. Division by zero, uh, exchange of factors in multiplication, and conversions of area. Those are three things we're talking about. So how come we can't divide by zero, Eli? Right, like I can't have something of nothing. So when you're talking about a fraction, like 5 out of 6 or something, okay, that means I have 5 out of 6, like pieces of pizza or something, right? Um, so I can't have 5 out of 0 pieces of pizza. I can't have something of nothing. This is impossible, and it's just something you want to remember forever in math. You can never have zero in the denominator of a fraction, and this comes into play in math for, like, up to calculus, all right? So, two out of zero. What we want to write down as our answer is undefined. So, if you have zero in the denominator, we write that's undefined. I can't have something of nothing. All right, we have a different word for zero over zero. Okay, if you have zero over zero, this is called in determinate indeterminate all right you do need to memorize those two a lot of times people get them mixed up all right so if you have zero just in the denominator undefined and zero over zero is indeterminate all right this one is okay you can have zero out of two right if you have big pizza and you cut it in halvesies and you eat it all all right you have zero of two this is equal to zero you do need to know that, all right? So if zero is in the top, you always want to put equals zero, okay? All right. So let's evaluate a few of these. Uh, four minus two minus two. What is that equal to, everyone? Zero. Out of 13, which is equal to zero, all right? So if you have zero in the top, be sure you write equals zero. And what if I have this, okay? So again, this would be 13 on the top, and now 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0. What do we write for this one? Yes, and you have to write the whole word. Don't shorten it. Undefined. Exchange of factors in multiplication. Factors are just things we're multiplying together. So basically, this is the commutative property for multiplication, where you can multiply in either order. I don't think you guys need to write this down, because I think we've talked about this before, all right? But commutative property of addition would be like 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. This is commutative property of multiplication, where you can multiply in any order. Can you divide in any order, though, and get the same answer? No. It only works for multiplication and addition. Find the product. So you can multiply these however you want, all right? You might want to show some work. So let's say I multiply these two together first. What do I get? 12, okay. And then let's say I multiply these two together. What do I get? Okay. And then I can multiply those together to get negative 144, all right? So multiply in whatever order you want. Now I have this one. What do you notice about this problem compared to the last problem? Yeah, it's the exact same thing. I have a negative 6, I have a negative 4, I have a positive 3, I have a negative 2, right? They just switch the order around, so what is the answer? Yep. One thing you might want to check, too, is how many negative signs did we have? Yeah. So a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. If you have an odd number of negatives, you should get a negative answer, just to make sure you're checking that. All right. Now we did just unit multipliers for, like, single lengths. Now what if we have area? Um, so I have centimeters squared or inches squared, okay? Use two unit multipliers to convert 44 square inches to square centimeters. So we're going to start with this, 44 square inches. And you need to write that like this, inches squared. Okay? So 
Square inches means inches squared. And then you put it over one. All right, I need to convert this to square centimeters. So how many centimeters are in an inch, everyone? Good, and you have to know that for the test, 2.54. All right, so we are going to multiply by... All right, so I have one inch has to go in the bottom because inches is in the top, all right? And then I have 2.54 centimeters that are equal to one inch, okay? What I need, though, is I need two of these. So it says to use two unit multipliers. This is one. You can either write this down again, or my preference is you put a big set of parentheses and you square the entire thing, okay? You have to have the square on the outside because you are actually squaring this, and you are squaring this, and you are squaring this, and you are squaring this. It squares every single thing inside of those parentheses, okay? Or you can write it twice. So, final answer, this cancels with, this is technically squared, inches squared, okay? Because it goes to everything. And how you would write your answer, I would need to see the 44, which is only written one time, all right? And then I would need to see the 2.54, which is written twice, so it needs to be squared. Or you can write it like that, or you can write it twice, all right? And then this is divided by one, so one squared is still one, and times one, we really don't need the one in the bottom. And then we need our units, centimeters squared. That is your final answer. Yes, Jeremiah. Yes, it matters what number you put the parentheses on. Oh, like you mean here? Yeah. Well, you definitely need it on this one because of the square, I think. It would be better on this one for the square. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Use four unit multipliers to convert 125 square centimeters to square feet. So we start with 125 square centimeters, which means centimeters squared over one. We want to go to feet, but first we have to go to what? Inches. Good. So we're going to do a big set of parentheses instead of writing this down twice, okay? So centimeters has to go in the bottom. So there are 2.54 centimeters equal to one inch, and the entire thing has to be squared. All right? Because then my centimeters squared cancels with my centimeters squared. But I need two more. It says to use four of these unit multipliers. That's two. I need two more. All right? So I went from centimeters to inches. Now I need to go to what? Now I need to go inches to feet. Okay? Big set of parentheses, uh, all in parentheses. Okay? And now inches can go on the bottom since inches is in the top. So I need 12 inches down here is equal to one foot, and I have to do the entire thing squared, because this one's area, right? So whenever it's area, the units are squared. So now my centimeters squared cancels with my centimeters squared, and my inches squared cancels with my inches squared. Okay, and do not get confused on this last step. This is where people, like, make mistakes, even in Algebra 2, all right? So the 125 is on the top. Is it squared? No. Okay, the first number is never squared. All right, now this 2.54, is it in the top or the bottom? Bottom, and is it squared? Yes, okay, yes, it is squared. This two is squaring everything, okay, but one squared is still one. All right, and is the 12 in the top or the bottom? It is in the bottom, and is it squared or no? Yes. All right, and then I still need my units. Don't put it in the denominator, some of you guys are doing that. I like would just put it off to the side. My answer is that whole thing in feet squared. And eventually we'll plug these into our calculator and get something that makes sense. Okay? And yes. Yeah, don't do that. I don't like that. Yeah, you might get confused about stuff later. So don't do that. Do each thing squared. Nolan, we do have a test on Friday. This is not, but regular unit multipliers are. Yeah, it only goes through seven. So these, like, area ones, it might be on there, but just the single ones. So you do need to know, like, 2.54 centimeters in an inch. 
Okay. All right, you guys, let's try some whiteboards.